Assalamualaikum dan selamat tengah hari eh. So we'll continue on with the next topic. Oh, chapter 11 dah kita. Chapter 11 ya. Eh. Pasal transformer protection. Transformer protection. Okay, so kita go straight lah among the issues lah. So transformer in rush, so selalu berlaku bila first time you nak energize transformer lah. Every time you nak energize lah sebenarnya. Ha? In steady state, transformer magnetizing current required is very small lah. About 1% of the rated current lah. Eh? Uh, however, during energization, the in rush to the primary winding may reach as high as 12 to 18 times. Uh, 12 to 18 times of the rated current uh, which could last from 0.1 up to 1 second uh, pernah juga kita jumpa yang sampai 2-3 saat pun tak turun-turun lagi dia punya inrush so ni transformer tu memang besar lah 50-60 MVA and then the inrush may cause mal operation of the instantaneous high vo- apa? Uh, HV over current and effort uh, ataupun boleh menyebabkan HV fuse link to fuse lah to melt or to to break lah Uh, fortunately this in rush eh, they contain a lot of uh, second harmonic punya content eh. uh, so this can be used to restrain transformer differential or high voltage in- instantaneous fault lah during switching eh. so this is in rush punya issue eh. 12 ke 18 kali lah kalau first time on memang tinggi kalau you tak discharge transformer betul-betul pun katalah you baru buat IR ke PI pada transformer yang you tak discharge DC component tu Uh, it can go even higher, much higher than that lah. Uh. Alright. So, transformer protection. So, there are two parts to transformer protection. We have the electrical protection and also the mechanical protection. Electrical is the normal overcurrent fault. Uh, can be IDMT and instantaneous or both. Uh, differential relay and also the restricted fault which focus on the differential protection of the secondary winding or the star winding lah ok and then uh, mechanical we have book calls all temperature winding temperature pressure relief device and also oil level lah these are all the typical mechanical protection that is available lah so we'll look uh, in a brief one by one lah so for overcurrent and fault so for small power and distribution transformers uh, overcurrent and fault release and all fuses are used Okay, uh, and then HV, or self we can use uh, HV instantaneous and IDMT over current combination or we can just use the high voltage uh, IDM, high voltage means the primary side, eh? IDMT a fault, then secondary or the low voltage side IDMT over current, then the secondary IDMT a fault. Uh. So choice of over current fault location depends, lah. both HV and LV, expensive but you will have full protection. Uh, secondary winding protects LV side only. Primary winding as a backup needs a standby fault at the LV side. Lah. So we'll see what is meant by the standby fault. Lah. So high set overcurrent at HV side must be set not to operate for LV side faults. Lah. For example, if there's any fault on the secondary bus bar or any uh, any fault at the uh, secondary winding, uh, sorry, at the secondary winding uh, at the secondary bus bar or much downstream from there. So high, high set over current must not be set to operate lah. Uh, okay, then high set fault must ensure stability during transformer in rush. This is normally the issue with uh, a fault setting on the primary side of the winding because only the primary will apa, experience that in rush current lah. Uh, a fault at LV, there are three ways to protect. Uh, we can use a restricted fault or the number 64N or 87N, uh, internal transformer fault only and then IDMT fault which we use uh, residual connection and also standby fault back up to REF or IDMT lah and this standby fault must be used to trip the upstream circuit breaker ok let's see here restricted fault so here's on our left side here is the primary winding the LV secondary winding so relay will only operate for a fault within the protected zone lah So in this case we are looking at the 
protected zone is between two cities. Lah. So the first city is the one located at the neutral star point. The second city, which is measuring a fault uh, by summation. Eh? This one, red, yellow and blue, will sum and uh, this will uh, come up with the zero sequence current for these three phases. Eh? So under normal condition, these two cities, this city and these three cities are looking into the winding. So under normal condition, when there's an effort external to this, uh, both all the cities will look, but they will cancel each other. Lah. So there will be no detection of effort within this zone. So this uses a high impedance principle. So normally there will be a high impedance uh, resistor or uh, resistor here within uh, in series to the REF. So usually maximum the stability level is usually maximum through fault level of the transformer. Sensitivity normally is set to less than 30%, minimum of fault level. Lah. So it only works when there's a fault within this cities, lah. which is this zone, lah. this is a protected zone. Lah. So normally these three cities are located at the switch gear, so it will also cover not only the transformer secondary winding as well as the cable lah, or bus bar or bus duct if it's used. Lah. So LV is can rewinding a fault only. Yeah. So this is a combination uh, differential and REF at the transformer. So here we have number 87 differential, 87T, yeah, referring to transformer 40. So we have our C two sets of CTs on the upstream and secondary up, uh, downstream another set of CTs. So as you can see, this is a delta star winding, uh, whereas this the CT on the primary side is connected in star connection for the differential, while on the secondary side it is connected on the delta. This is to interpose, to interpose the, apa, the, the vector lah, the vector of the current. If not, there will be a differential current. If you just connect it normal like a star point to star point, there will be a, there will be a differential current lah, always. Uh, this is due to the fact that. It's a delta star connection. It has already been shifted maybe by 30 degrees. It depends on DYN11 or DYN1. So that this, uh, we transpose the, uh, the connection to compensate that, uh, that angle. All right. This is for the differential 8070. And we have another part is the restricted fault. Similar like the, yeah, similar like the one, uh, uh, that we explained on the previous page. So this, these three calls here are actually uh, representing another protection uh, over current, uh, the CT. Uh. Okay. So for all type differential relays, CTs needs to be transposed uh, to accommodate the shift in the transformer vector group, uh, DYN11, DYN5, DYN1. So you kena connection CT tu, you kena transpose, kena ubah. Sebab dulu nak kena, nak kena compensate vector group yang dah berubah tu lah. But for the new number, numerical microprocessor relay, tak ada isu. Because there is a internal compensation within that relay. So even CT ratio selected must be selected to avoid CT ratio mismatch. Uh, but new relays, you can, you can compensate all these CT ratios lah if there's a mismatch. So you will minimize that error due to the CT ratio mismatch. Uh, but all relays, no, you cannot, you cannot compensate. Lah. So you have to really select the ratio correctly. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the error is much higher lah as compared to the new modern relays. Huh? On top of the differential percent bias setting, the second harmonic bias shall need to be enabled as well. Lah. This is for the transformer in rush during the energization of the transformer. Huh? So here is a differential uh, relay with a bias uh, bias uh, bias percentage bias coil as well as a second harmonic filter coil lah. bias coil. Eh? So when it's in rush, this second harmonic pass filter coil will uh, sort of block or limit the current flowing through the operating coil. Same for the bias pro uh, percentage bias lah. So these two uh, will uh, sort of, uh, stabilize the uh, the transformer differential as not to trip nuisance. Yeah. Now it's on the transformer standard fault SBEF. Eh? So this is a backup protection for the REF restricted fault 
and also IDMT a fault line, which we use uh, summation city. Eh? So it uses it uses only one neutral city, which is located at the transformer star point to adding. Uh, stem SBF also protects the transformer because of its location at the star point adding of the secondary winding. For example, if there's any fault here and you have no RF, you so this CT will not be able to see that fault anymore. Lah. So only this CT will be able to, to see that there's a fault happening here. So what happens, this relay will pick up 51N standby fault, but it needs to trip the upstream breaker. There's no use for you to trip this breaker because uh, even if you trip this breaker on the secondary, the fault is still there. So you need to trip the secondary breaker as well as the upstream breaker. Okay. Uh, System by fault if triggered must trip the upstream circuit breaker as well. So next on the mechanical protection is the book house relay. Always remember book house with a double H. So typically used with transformers with a conservator tank. So contains two mercury switches for alarm and trip. Transformer incipient faults will generate small amount of gas and operate alarm relay. Lah. While heavier faults will generate violent amount of gas and trip the relay almost instantaneously. Lah. If there is a book cost relay, uh, these are the things that you should do. Uh, please note the gas color, whether it's brown or yellow, it could be due to internal arcing. So once you see this gas, you must, uh, as fast as possible, sample the gas uh, if not, the gas may dissolve again in oil uh, when the oil temperature cools down. Uh. So normally, after tripping due to bukos and you see there's a gas inside the bukos compartment, uh, even after two to three hours, the gas would have dissolved uh, and the oil would have filled up that area again. Uh. So the gas must be sampled uh, fast enough. Uh. Uh, second is colorless gas is probably trapped air. Eh? Mostly happen during commissioning if vacuuming and oil filling is improper. So if this is the first time you are filling up your transformer and you did not vacuum it properly or maybe you are doing a, a oil filtration, sometimes there's a mix of air going into there. So there might be some trapped air within the transformer tank. So this is uh, considered not dangerous but you must um, some, it will trigger nuisance stripping of the book cost. Uh, so what do you normally do is that for new transformers, you have to really vacuum it uh, until uh, maybe 2 or two to 8 millibar. Uh, and then uh, if you are doing a relay, uh, uh, oil filtration, uh, you need to monitor the transformer once energized for the first 24 to 72 hours uh, just to see whether there's any trap air which is being built up within the Bukos punya compartment lah. And then shorted contacts due to water ingress lah. This is uh, water ingress within the uh, apa, the tripping or the alarm contacts of the uh, Bukos relay. Eh. So these are the typical uh, causes to trip the Bukos lah. So this is the Bukos relay. It's normally located between your conservator and the tank. So the, the piping is a little bit slanted for gravity flow. So if there's any gas coming in, so this part here, the gas will fill up this part. So until, uh, so under normal condition, the oil is filled all the way up here. All the, fill, all the way up here. So don't forget to bleed your book cost relay during first commissioning or during, uh, after, during, after oil filtration. So you must make sure that the oil is filled up all the way to the top. So if there's any gas uh, coming from the tank, it will come through here and fill up the top part. Lah. So if it's a, it's a slow gas build up, it will go to alarm, then it will go to trip. Lah. If it's a very fast build up, like a flash over internal of the transformer, uh, then it could just trigger the trip almost immediately. Lah. Okay, so this is the alarm contact and the trip contact. Lah. All right. Temperature relay and pressure relay device. So we have temperature relay which is uh, detect to detect transformer temperature for overloading and also cooling equipment failure. Lah. So this is an indirect uh, indirect finding of a co cooling equipment failure. Lah. Obviously, if there's a transformer temperature going up, there could be some problem with your cooling equipment. Lah. 
So use also to start the cooling system for on-off type transformer. If you have a transformer with on-off uh, configuration, which is uh, all natural air force, so the temperature layer is used to start uh, the the cooling fans, uh, the cooling fans or the cooling system. Uh. All right. Then we also have the pressure relief device. It's a spring-loaded PRD on top of the transformer tank. May be more than one location for very large transformers. Uh, device can be reset or it may self-reset after operation. An operation with evidence of oil is a sign of some serious problem. Eh? So this is a pressure relief device normally located on top of your transformer main tank. So this uh, pressure relief device is maybe in, uh, rated to a certain maybe 3.3 bar, 3.5 uh, bar or something. So if the pressure within the transformer tank is built up to more than that pressure, so this pressure relief device uh, will will sort of uh, uh, relieve the pressure within the transformer tank. Uh. And the spring will pull the, the PRD back to its original position. Uh. Uh, but there's a switch here to indicate whether the PRD has operated or not. Uh. Okay. Alright. Then we have here our oil temperature. This is the probe. Uh. Then capillary connected directly to the temperature sensor temperature indicator. Uh. So the temperature indicator is from 0 to 120. Uh. So our transformer, normally if it's a paper-based transformer, the it's a class uh, class A. So normally the the maximum temperature rating allowed is up to 105 degrees uh, or 100 degrees. So it depends on the temperature class of the transformer. Uh. When you see it on the transformer nameplate, there will be two rating. One is the oil temperature rise rating, another one is the a winding temperature rise rating. So normally both of these differ by about 5 degrees lah with the winding uh, is higher than the oil temperature. Okay, so this oil temperature, oh sorry, oil temperature is, will not be up to 105, so it will be maybe bit, uh, between 90 alarm and 100 for the trip setting lah. While the winding temperature, it is also using the same concept as the oil temperature. But there, we, there is an additional heating coming from the CT. Lah. So the CT is measuring the normal current of the load. So this current will be used to heat up another heater element which will uh, increase uh, the temperature reading of the of the, of the, of the temperature indicator. Lah. So normally the temperature reading difference between the winding and the oil is about 5 degrees Celsius. Eh? Alright, so in this case, normally if it's a paper insulated, the alarm is set at 95 and the trip is set at 105 degrees Celsius. Eh? But here, there's now more modern uh, winding, there's not, sorry, there's more modern uh, paper type that could withstand higher temperature, so it could be set higher. Lah. So if this is a uh, winding using cast resin type, that temperature will be higher, lah, the setting, because cast resin can... Uh, can resist much higher temperature lah during its normal operation. Eh? So, if you think this material is good, please share this material to your electrical friends. Uh, and do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Kraksof EE. And then my Facebook page, please uh, like my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Kraksof EE. And if you have any other questions, please throw, the, uh, throw them the, uh, in the comments below. Or you can email me directly lah at kraksofee at gmail.com. Thank you. Eh?